This is a Bashir from Central Africa. The species seen here is known as Polypterus delhezi. They inhabit weedy shallows along river margins, swamps, and lakes. In the wild, they can grow to a length of 16 inches and have a diet that includes fish, amphibians, and earthworms, as well as other small invertebrates. These carnivorous predators have several physical adaptations that allow them to survive in shallow water that has very low levels of dissolved oxygen. One of the most striking features of the polypterus is its unique dorsal fin. Rather than having a single dorsal, the polypterus has a series of distinctive finlets running down along its back. The polypterus has many of the important physical adaptations that are needed to survive in very shallow water. Some fish go into the shallows in search of food, while others go into shallow water to escape the jaws of hungry predators. The long, slender body of the polypterus is perfectly suited for traveling in these highly vegetated, shallow water habitats, where a more bulky profile would make movement difficult. The lobed pectoral fins of the polypterus are one of the key adaptations that contribute to their success in shallow water environments. Their pectoral fins often seem to function more like arms rather than fins. These arm-like movements are useful for pushing themselves in and out of dense vegetation in shallow water whereas standard swimming motion using normally attached fins would be ineffective. The lobe fins allow the polypterus to lift the front part of its body out of the water to take a breath. They can also be used as brakes. Slow-moving shallow water habitats typically have very low levels of dissolved oxygen. In order to cope with these oxygen-poor waters, the polypterus is equipped with both gills and a pair of lungs. The polypterus and the lungfish are the only fish that have true lungs. In fact, they are obligate air breathers and will die if denied access to the surface. At birth, polypterous fry have a larval phase during which their lungs are not fully developed. In order to compensate for their underdeveloped lungs, larval polypterids have external gills to assist with oxygen uptake. External gills such as these can also be seen on larval lungfish, larval salamanders and newts, as well as the neotenic axolotl. If necessary, the polypterus is able to leave the water and travel overland for short distances. 
On land, the pectoral fins are used to help them get a foothold on the substrate and move themselves forward. In fact, as long as its skin stays wet, the polypterus can survive on land for several months at a time. Their survival on land is made possible by their two lungs and by their ability to take a breath, either through the mouth or through two large openings at the top of the head known as spiracles. The polypterus just inhaled air from the surface using its spiracles. Let's take a closer look. The polypterus rises to the surface of the water and exhales a bubble of gas from its lungs out through its operculum. Inhalation begins as soon as the operculum closes to form a tight seal and the spiracles open. Air is then rapidly drawn into the lungs through the open spiracles. The ability to breathe above the waterline was an important milestone in the evolutionary journey from fish to early amphibian. Ultimately, the rise of the earliest amphibians would stem from a different group of fish, known as the Sarcopterygians. Polypterus locate their prey by following the scent trail that they leave behind. These external nostrils help pinpoint the exact location of their prey. In this case, the prey is a carnivore pellet hidden in this shallow area. Be sure to notice that the polypterus brings half of its head out of the water in order to get at its meal. Small prey items are captured by a feeding technique known as inertial suction. It employs a rapid opening of the jaws and expansion of the buccal cavity to create a vacuum that draws in the prey. Inertial suction is the most common prey capture technique used by aquatic vertebrates. The drawback to this feeding strategy is that the fish tends to swallow bits of substrate along with its food. Polypterids should never be kept on a substrate containing gravel that is small enough for them to swallow, as this could result in a fatal impaction of their digestive tract. Sand is the preferred substrate for all polypterous species. 
White sand tends to wash out their colors, while a dark sand yields better color and contrast. In the following feeding scenes, be sure to notice how the spiracles open and close while the mouth and throat are obstructed by the prey. My Polypterus delhezi is fed a staple diet of carnivore pellets. All polypterists love to eat fish. So any tank mate small enough to fit in its mouth will probably be eaten. I use large pieces of fish in an attempt to capture the polypterus performing a death roll. The death roll is a feeding technique used by alligators, crocodiles, and the polypterists to rip pieces of flesh from prey items that are too large to swallow whole. <laughs> 